we ask not. So, Lord, we are asking this morning. God, we know that that would do amazing things in our lives, in our families, and in our church, God. If every one of us was walking in that intimate fellowship with you, God. Father, we pray for that impartation. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will, stand with me this morning. Exodus chapter 33, we're going to begin reading in verse 7. The Bible says that Moses took his tent and he pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of meeting. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tabernacle of meeting, which was outside the camp. And so it was whenever Moses went out to the tabernacle that all the people arose and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moses until he had gone into the tabernacle. Now listen to this, verse 9, key verse, and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. Do you ever think that in our prayers with God, that what God has to say is a whole lot more important than what I have to say? It says, And all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose and worshipped each man in his tent door. Now I was reading this and I thought about our fellowship. How our fellowship with God ought to impact those that are around us. Our fellowship with God ought to have an impact on our community. Amen? I mean, it says right here that when Moses went in, the cloud came down. It says all of the people rose and they began to worship each man in his tent. Verse 11, it says, And so the Lord spoke to Moses, how? Face to face. As a man speaks to his friend, and he would return to the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Amen. You may be seated. Intimate fellowship with God is that vital part of every believer's life that must be continually, listen to this, it must be continually developed, constantly guarded, and personally enjoyed. And so ask the question, is your fellowship with God, is it still under development? I want to tell you something. You this morning, you might be in intimate fellowship with God today. But next month, you might not be. Maybe, maybe tomorrow you might not be. And so there is a continual development of this fellowship with God. This continual cultivating of this relationship that we have with God. It needs to take place. But not only do we need to develop, but we've got to guard it. So many things get in our way of fellowship with God. Name one of those things. How about your flesh? Just simply being in this suit of flesh. Guess what? My, my, my flesh is not into intimate fellowship with God. It will not cooperate. But also someone else. Listen, sometimes you've got to fight to have fellowship with God. You got to fight the devil. Let me tell you something. If there's somebody that doesn't want you to have fellowship with God, it is our arch enemy, the devil. And so sometimes in the process of me going to a quiet place, I get a phone call or something else comes up or something else gets in the way. See, I got to guard my fellowship with God. And I want to tell you something. Let me just be just a just little confessional moment right here. My relationship with the Lord, my fellowship with God, I'll be honest with you, I've got a lot to work on. I've got a lot to work on. I haven't arrived. I think if we asked Billy Graham this morning, I think he would say, I haven't arrived. But I'm still working on it. See? And so not only that, but it needs to be enjoyed. You ever have a, a friend or someone that you just really enjoy being in their company? Husbands, you should say you should be saying yes. <clears throat> you should be saying absolutely. The woman that I'm sitting beside. Let me tell you, thank you, Gene. 
It's a little late. I mean, you should have come a little bit earlier. I, I enjoy having fellowship with my wife. I mean, there is, I, I'll tell you, there is no other person on planet Earth that I would rather be with than be with my wife. Husbands should be saying, me too. Even after 18 years, I am thrilled to be with my wife. And, and you know what? There are times that I, I will go out of my way just to spend some time with my wife. There are people in our lives, and it might not be your, your wife, it may be a close friend, that you just thoroughly enjoy fellowship with them. And I mean, because something happens, there's an exchange there. I can remember last, this past week I had lunch with a, uh, a guy on uh, Monday, and I had a lunch with a guy on Wednesday. And uh, both times, during both, conver both meetings with these guys, both lunch times, uh, when we sat down, I mean, the conversation never stopped. I mean, it was back and forth. And I can just remember, man, I was glad to be there. I was glad to be in their company. Because, listen, some people can make you feel important, right? Some people can, when you, when you get up from that conversation with them, you feel a little bit more strength. I want to tell you something. When we get into fellowship with God, God makes us feel, feel important. Listen, if you don't feel important this morning, you ought to look at the cross. Just look at the cross. Listen to the message of the gospel. You are highly important to God. Did I say that last week? I said it again this week. Must, must need to say it again. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, that fellowship with God, God will, God will go out of His way to have fellowship with you. God will meet you anywhere to have fellowship with you. Praise the Lord. That just tells me that God is interested in fellowship with me and interested in fellowship with you. This, listen, this fellowship that took place in Exodus chapter 33, it came at a critical moment in, in the life of Israel. Uh, Moses was in the mountain and, and Israel was down at the foot of the, the mountain and they had put the golden calf together and they had sinned against God and that was broken fellowship. Probably somebody in here this morning, listen, maybe you had good fellowship with God at one time, but today, for some reason, something got in the way of your relationship with God and today it's a broken relationship. I want to tell you good news this morning. Good news. That broken relationship can be restored. Praise the Lord. It can be restored. That's exactly what was happening here in this, this fellowship that's taking place with Moses. What does it take to have intimate fellowship with God? Well, you find it in these scriptures right here. Look in verse 7, the first thing that it takes. Intimate fellowship with God. Listen, there must be intentional separation. In order for us to have fellowship with God, there must be intentional separation. Moses took his tent in verse 7, and he pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp. And listen, this tent that he pitched, it was not the Holy of Holies. It was not the tabernacle that was outlined in 25 and 26, 27. It wasn't that. This was Moses' personal tent. And it says that he separated himself. Let me tell you something about Moses. Moses had a history of being separated. You remember at birth, the Bible says that Pharaoh had given the order to kill all of the male children. And Moses, he was separated from his family. You remember that? And then Moses, he, he left into uh, Median. And he was in the wilderness watching Jethro's flocks. And he was out watching the flocks. And God separated him, calling him up into the mountain. You remember that place when God called him and he put a call on his life. Let me tell you something, if you're a born-again believer, you got a call on your life. And it is a call to separation. It is not a call to isolation. God has not called us to be monks. The, the monks, they had it wrong. Let me tell you something, God has called us. Listen, we can't be any good to anybody unless we separate ourselves and be alone with God. We've got to separate ourselves. Be alone with God. Then we come back into the company of other people. Then we can minister to people. Then we can walk into a company with an anointing on our lives. But first, we must intentionally separate ourselves. You know, you think about this, this separation right here. 
And it's a, it's, a, it's a vital part of 